So good afternoon everybody and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, so let me just look at the agenda for this afternoon. So I'll be just um, dividing up the training into two sections for you. So the first part of the webinar will take a look at the payroll functionality of BrightPay. So I will just guide you through how to set up an employer first of all and then setting up employees and directors in BrightPay. And then we'll be moving on to um, the actual processing of payroll, so how to create and enter pay items on your employee pay slips, um, how to finalise pay periods and um, submit your RTI returns to HMRC. Um, I'll just guide you then through um, the HMRC payments section of the software and um, just to complete part one, we'll be looking at the analysis and reporting section. We'll then take a short break and then after the little break, we will then take a look at the automatic enrollment functionality in BrightPay and you'll just see the 10 um, steps there that I will be covering later on for you. So we'll get started without delay. As Karen just mentioned, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in throughout the webinar and then I'll do my best if time allows just to, to answer them for you. If not, I will be able to get back to you in writing at the end of the webinar. Okay. So just to speed things up this afternoon, I already have the software installed onto my PC here, but the software itself, for you to get started, you simply visit our website, which is www.brightpay.co.uk. And on there, you'll find the download links to, to download the software. So the software installs as a free trial initially, and you get 60 days free use of the software. And that's the full working version there that, that you, you receive on the trial. So once you have the software installed, um, and it will place an icon on your desktop for you, um, by double clicking on the icon, this first screen will open up for you. So this is, will be where your employer um, files will be listed. So I have a company already set up here, which I'll be using later on. But when you first start BrightPay, you'll have nothing in here. So your first step will be to click on the new employer option at the bottom of the screen here. So this will then bring you through a wizard just click on next here. So BrightPay will ask um, you, um, for, well you'll be given three options basically, um, so you'll be asked how would you like to use BrightPay. So the first option is to start at the beginning of the tax year in question, so if you have pay records from April 2015, if we're talking about the current year here, this will be the option you'll be selecting. The second option is if you are starting part way in the 15-16 tax year, so if you are setting up a brand new entity, there's no previous payroll records in the year, then this second option is what you'll be choosing. And thirdly, you have the option to continue part way in the, in the tax year in question. This is the one you will be selecting if you are migrating from one software provider to BrightPay and it's mid-tax year. So this will allow you to import or enter manually any year-to-date figures. So it would be important to select option three in this instance. So for the purpose of the training today, we'll start at the beginning of the tax year. So simply click on next and this will then just guide you through a few steps. You'll see here it's asking for basic employer information, so your employer name and address. I'm just going to use a little cheat key here just to auto populate these fields for me. And then on the next screen just um, you're asked about your employer registration details. So I suppose the key um, thing here is enter as much as you can. Some things will be mandatory for RTI, for example your employer POIE reference and also your accounts office reference. I'm just going to type one in here. We'll need it later. Okay, and then you're asked whether the employer in question qualifies for small employers relief. And if you are operating a contracted out pension scheme, then you'll be provided with the field to enter your econ number. So I'm going to click on next. Um, so if you desire, departments can be set up within BrightPay and employees allocated to those departments. And one of the main features of BrightPay is that you can allocate employees to more than one department in any one pay period. And those departments can then be used in your payroll processing and also in the analysis function. So when you're generating reports, you can do some departmental analysis. Um, so I'll just click on next here. 
On the following screen then, should you wish, you can set up default um, employee settings. So for example, if your employee is a mainly weekly page, you can instruct Brightpay to always apply these settings whenever you go to create a new employee record. So for example, they may always be paid by check, for example. And also you have the facility here to just enter what a typical annual leave days, etc. Okay, if you have already staged when starting with Brightpay or you are in receipt of your automatic, uh, sorry, you are in receipt of your staging date and you're, you're due to stage in the future, then you can enter your staging date at this stage. Alternatively, you can wait and enter that date um, later on in the software. And then finally, you're just asked if you would like to password protect your software. Um, if so, simply tick this box, enter your password and we click save and finish. So the way Brightpay operates is that the software itself will install locally to your PC and your employer files then sit away from the software. So if you are in a bureau environment, this could be a server, a network, a cloud environment. Um, so you will have um, the flexibility to choose where these files go to. So I'm just going to click save here and my employer file is now set up. So I'm now in my employer file here and you'll see across the top we now have seven options. So should you wish to view or edit or add further employer information, this can be done by clicking the employer heading here on the menu bar. And here you'll find then the information that you've just set up when going through the employer setup wizard. Okay. You will find further options within the employer file, so it is probably good practice when you first set up the employer that you come in here and just um, fill in anything extra about the employer. For example, you may have a self-assessment unique tax reference or a corporation tax reference number, which can be entered. Um, if you're using direct backs or RTI backs, as it's sometimes known, then you can enter your service user number here. And for example, if you're operating a payroll giving scheme, your payroll giving reference can be entered in this screen as well. Within the employer utility, you'll then find you have access to the typical employee settings again. So should you wish to change something that you set up initially, you can by all means come in here and make that change. And also just further information here that wasn't available for um, completing at the time of setting up the employer. Um, you, you have some options regarding tax refunds, sick pay, and again, if you're using direct backs or RTI backs, you can instruct Brightpay to automatically assign your sub-references on your employee's pay slip. Most importantly in the employer utility is this section here, the RTI submission section, and this has to be completed for you to be able to put through your RTI submissions. So simply choose your sender type from the drop-down menu and then complete your sender ID and password. So I'll just pop in some test credentials here. Okay, and then complete your contact information here. A question we get asked a lot um, on the support line is what is the information that goes in here and it has to match what you use to log into your HMRC online account, it has to match exactly there. Okay. So once complete, simply save changes. So what you also have within the employer utility across the top here is what we refer to as employer items and sometimes we refer to them as global items. And that just basically means that anything you set up within the employer utility, within these um, little sub-menus, basically means then that um, Whatever you set up here will be available for selection across all employee pay slips, and that will be regardless of pay frequency as well. So you could have employees on a weekly payroll um, and monthly employees too, but if you set up hourly rates, for example here, they, you can then select those hourly rates across the board, across all pay frequencies. So it basically will speed things up for you, so you're not having to set up hourly rates or additions and deductions on an individual basis. So just to give you a quick example here, so if I click on hourly rates and click on add new hourly rate, so for example here, we might have a 
the Sunday rate and it's paid at £20 an hour. And also then you can tick to indicate whether it's an overtime rate or not and click Save Changes. Okay. So that hourly rate now will be available selection across all my employees once I have set up my employees. Um, so I won't need to keep setting that up on an individual basis. The same applies for daily rates. So again, I'll just do a quick example with you. Under daily rate, set up the amount and save. Okay. Same applies then to addition and deduction types. You can set up employer items for these. Um, if we just click into addition types here, we have a number of preset additions already for you. So probably the most commonly used additions that we come across. So for example, if I just choose bonus there, okay, so you'll see that BrightPay has taken the hard work out of it for you and has kind of applied default um, allowable deductions for you. So it's indicating that tax can be deducted, not insurance contributions can be deducted, etc. Um, to set up a new edition that isn't in the listing here, you simply click on new, say for example mileage, and then the user will then just need to indicate whether they're allowable or non-allowable um, deductions on it. And if there's a default amount, you can enter a default amount in here. And also, you can then select the repetition. So is it applicable to one period only, one pay period only, or do you want it to remain on an employee's pay slip until manually removed? So I'll select this option here, click on Save, and that's now added mileage as a global item for you. The same then is applicable for deduction types. Um, again, we have a couple already preset in for you here. And again, to set up a new deduction type, simply click on new and enter accordingly. Should you wish to operate a savings scheme in BrightPace, for example, maybe a Christmas fund or a holiday saving fund, um, then a savings scheme can be set up here and applied to employees' pay slips as well. And one of the key features again about BrightPay here is with the bank accounts and BrightPay basically allows unlimited bank accounts to be added into the software. So you may have a number of employer bank accounts, maybe some employees are paid from one bank account, directors from another. So this allows you to come in here and set up any number of employer bank accounts that you need. So we'll say, for example, Barclays. example. You'll see here from the drop-down listing here that we do cater for a good number of bank payment file formats. So if you are looking to pay employees um, by producing a bank file, which you then subsequently upload into your banking software, then you can see the listing here. So I think we have a, probably the, the main banks covered. If there's any bank file there that you know that you need and isn't there by all means contact us often it's just a case of us getting the file specification from the bank in question um, and us bringing it into the software so it's not too much hard work for us, to, for us to do that okay so I'll choose Barclays here and save if I was to add more employee bank accounts so I simply click on new repeat the process and if there is one bank account that's to be the primary bank account you can simply tick the default button there. Okay. Okay. So the employee utility can be accessed at any time and any new global items added as you wish. Okay. So once you have your employee utility completed, if I now go to the employees section, so as this is a brand new setup, obviously we have no employees in BrightPay at the moment. So employees can be added in two ways. First of all, you can add employees manually. Or number two, and again, it's particularly useful if you're migrating from another software provider. Um, if you can export your employee details from your previous software, then BrightPay can facilitate importing those employees in via CSV file. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. So first of all, going with our first option, if we're to set up an employee manually, all we need to do is click the Add New Employee option here. 
and you'll be presented with six tab headings here um, on each employee record. So it's really just a case of systematically going through each tab and completing the details accordingly. Again, I'll just use a little cheat key here. just want a lady. There we go. Um, okay. So on the personal um, details screen, you're just asked for basic information about the employee. So name, address, their gender, date of birth, etc. Um, there are mandatory requirements for RTI, and they would be the employee's full name, their surname, their gender, and if you don't have a national insurance number for an employee, then you will need their address as well. Date of birth and things like passport number and nationality are optional, but we would again always advise that fill in as much as you can. Should you wish to um, email, for example, pay slips later on to employees and also maybe their P60 at the end of the tax year, then you can add in an email address here. Okay. And should you wish um, the pay slips on, and the P6DB password protected, you can then just pop into the HR section here and enter a password to secure the, um, the email once received. Okay. Under the employment tab then you're asked um, if applicable to enter a works number and if you are wanting to use departments um, this is where you will assign your employee to the departments in question. So I simply click on add department and select the relevant option and if my employee is working in more than one department I can add another for example. And then I'm then given the option to set the weighting. So if they work more in management, say for example 80% of their time, then I can set the percentage accordingly there. Um, on the employment um, tab as well, just down the bottom, this is where you will um, set the employee's annual leave entitlement. Um, so for example, when does their leave year start? You can choose accordingly. And also then the um, annual leave entitlement method. So we cater for those that are on maybe a fixed rate um, and have a set number of annual leave days per year. And then also if they're paid by the hour, there's various options for calculating their holiday um, entitlement based on number of hours worked. Okay. The start and leave section then, um, this really will come into play if you have mid-year starters or mid-year leavers, but you can also record an employee start date here outside of the tax year and the system will hold that for you. Moving on to the payment screen, this is where you will select the employee's pay frequency. And you can see here that BrightPay offers six payment frequencies, so weekly, fortnightly, four weekly, monthly, quarterly and yearly. So you just select accordingly and then you can then choose how the employee is to be paid. So is it to be on a, a set um, weekly basic, for example, on a daily rate or an hourly rate here? And then based on your selection, you can enter the applicable amounts here. Here you will also then select how the employee is to be paid, so be it cash, check or credit transfer. And if credit transfer Select this option and obviously complete your, employee, your employee's bank details um, as required. Most importantly then is probably the tax and NIC and RTI section because this is where you will be entering the employee's tax code here. Um, by default, we will always um, default to the current um, personal allowance tax code. So for this year, the, the 1060L. And then um, you just need to select the national insurance table. And if unsure, there is a little checklist here that will help you establish what it should be. If the employee is to repay the um, student um, loan, then you simply tick this button here. And if you have the start and stop date, again, um, enter this accordingly. And then if you have the national insurance number, enter it in the field provided here. So when setting up an employee, um, 
if the employer basically if you have directors as well directors are set up in exactly the same manner so you'll be presented with all the same screens for a director the only difference will be here where you're asked if the employee is a director or not so if they are a director simply tick this box and if they're a director from the start of the tax year you don't need to fill in any of this section here or if their, their, um, their directorship has started mid-year, you can enter the date accordingly just using your calendar option here. Likewise, if their directorship ends mid-year, you'll come back into their employee record and just select the date of the, um, for the end date of the directorship. By default, um, BrightPay will apply the annual basis for the calculation of directors NIC. So should you wish that not to be the case and you wish to use the alternate method, then simply tick the box here to indicate that that's what you would like BrightPay to do. Okay, I'm just going to set this person back to be a normal employee here. Just then at the bottom of the tax NIC and RTI section then, um, you're asked for a few details that, and these are required for your full payment submission. So first of all, you'll need to enter a payroll ID. Um, and when setting up a new employee in BrightPay, this will be automatically created by BrightPay for you. So you don't have to be thinking of the payroll IDs yourself. One important thing to note though, is if you are migrating to um, to BrightPay from another payroll provider, it is important that the same payroll ID is input into BrightPay as was used in the previous software, and that will just ensure that HMRC don't accidentally create a second record for them, and um, it has been known to happen. So payroll IDs must match there. Um, you'll then ask just to indicate what the employee's contracted hours per week are, so there's a few options here and again it's an RTI requirement and also then to inform HMRC if the employee is on an irregular payment pattern for example if you have seasonal workers um, or somebody's gone off on maternity leave or somebody's on long-term sick so that really would be used if someone um, is not going to be paid for three months and it just informs HMRC not to remove them at their side that they haven't left the company they're simply not being paid Okay. You then have a HR section in the software and again um, fill in as much as you can um, based on the information that you are in receipt of. Okay. So once completed, um, simply click save at the bottom and your employee is now added to your employee listing for you. Okay. If you are manually setting up employees, then you simply click on new employee here and repeat the process again for each employee. So as I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, um, another option is if you have all your employee details in CSV file format, then BrightPay can import that information in for you. And this is particularly useful if you're migrating to BrightPay from another software provider. It will certainly speed things up for you. So to do so, if you have a CSV file that you can use, simply click on the file menu and import export data and we're going to choose the option to import employees from a CSV file. So you simply browse to where your CSV file is. I have mine here. Okay. Now again, just to speed things up um, this afternoon for you, I've already gone through and allocated what each column represents here. But if you're doing this for the first time, um, you will just need to just work through each column and tell BrightPay what the information represents, a title, name, surname, for example. There is a little help here under the options um, tab and you can actually just um, instruct BrightPay to try and match columns to your header row title. So it will do its best to match up. So you'll see here I've done the hard work already. So all my columns are matching to the information um, that is brought in. Okay. Once you've done that, and we do always say just give yourself a little time to do that. Um, it, it, again, it depends on how much information you are bringing in. And when ready, simply click on import. So I've got 10 employees set up with a click of a couple of buttons there. My employee listing is complete now. Okay, so 
Now moving on to the payroll. So we have our employer information in and we have our employee information in. So we're now ready to process some payroll. So if we now go to the payroll utility. So firstly, when setting up um, your payroll, you'll be asked for two pieces of information and that will be that those two pieces of information need to be entered for each pay frequency that you have. So in the, the example today, I've got weekly paid employees and I've also got employees on a monthly um, schedule too. So BrightPay will ask, first of all, for your pay date for the applicable um, pay frequency. So I'm being asked, first of all, for my first weekly pay date. So if I'm just going back a little way here, and we'll pretend we're just going back to the start of April here. So my first weekly pay date will be, the, for example, the 10th of April. And then BrightPay then asks you for, for the period that you're paying for. So for example, especially with weekly, an awful lot of people work in arrears, a week in arrears. So that may be a week back, for example. And so it could be, for example, it could be the 3rd of April that you choose there. Okay, I'm just going to choose the 9th here. And likewise for your monthly payroll, um, so what your first monthly pay date will be and when you are paying for. So I'm happy with that there. Before continuing, because pressing continue will actually set um, your pay schedule um, in stone for you, if you want to say it that way, but um, if I just do a preview here, I can quickly look down and, and just see how my pay dates will be falling. This is my weekly schedule here. So you can see here that I'm given 52 pay weeks. Um, so the system will detect whether or not I need a week 53 or not based on the schedule that I have entered in. And likewise for monthly. And again, this is something we recommend you check first, especially if migrating mid-year to BrightPay, that you do have the correct number of pay periods left in the software for what you, for what you need to complete. Okay, so once happy, we press continue. And we are now into our payroll. So I've instructed the software to start at the beginning of the tax year. So you can see here I have two blue um, schedule bars. So I have one for my weekly employees and one for my monthly employees. And they work completely independent to one another here. So if we start in weekly here, so what we're looking at here is known as the summary view. Um, and I suppose in other words, it's your payroll preview. So it's going to give you an, an overview of, of what your, your pay period um, is looking like before you finalize. This is something that payroll bureaus often like to maybe email over to their clients just for approval um, before they actually finalize payslips and before they submit any RTI submissions. So should that be something you wish to do, you can click on more and select the option to print or export the summary for the pay period in question. And that can subsequently then be attached to an email and sent over. So should I wish to now edit um, a particular employee's payslip, I simply select their name from the summary view and it brings you through to their payslip view here. So by default, BrightPay will bring in the settings that you applied in the employee record here. So you can see my first employee that I set up, Gemma Appleby. Um, I instructed BrightPay to that she, her weekly basic was to be £500 per week. So you can see that flowing through here. Each employee's payslip allows for an unlimited number of pay items to be added. Um, so for example, if I click on Add, I can add another weekly pay figure. I can add an hourly pay figure or a daily pay. And also I can add an unlimited number of additions and deductions if required. Okay. So for example, should I wish to allocate, um, say this lady is entitled to a bonus, I select bonus here and I can enter accordingly. And to add another, simply select the addition I wish to add to the pay slip and enter the amount in. Where you see a little spanner symbol, that means that there is added functionality around the pay item. So for example, if I click on the spanner here um, next to the weekly pay amount, you can see here that I can perform a net to gross calculation should I wish to, to have a, 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 that calculation. And also I can reset the departmental weighting. So if I need it to be 50-50, for example. 
Likewise, for any additions and deductions, I'm given uh, some similar options. So again, it could be that bonus was for sales, completely for sales. So I can set the departmental weighting to be 100% for sales for that pay item. And also I can then set a repetition. So if I want that bonus to repeat for maybe another couple of weeks, I can say repeat up to date and select a date on the calendar. All right. Need to go back. <laughs> and that will hold. So that addition and or deduction um, in question will be removed after that time. I can also reorder items as well. So by clicking on the spanner, I might want the mileage to be at the top so I can move around my additions and deductions uh, as, as, I, as required. Okay. Notes can be added to an employee's pay slip too. So should I require a note for the employee, I can add this on here. And also you can add employer notes as well. So these are simply system notes, so they wouldn't appear on the employee's pay slip, but they would hold on each pay slip within the software. So if you were viewing historical pay slips, for example, you would see that note um, that you have entered in there. Okay. That's my first employee. If I take my second employee here, you'll see that he is being paid an hourly rate instead. Um, so for hourly paid employees, you simply enter the number of hours. Okay. And again, as per the, the last employee we looked at, you can add unlimited pay items to an hourly paid employee's pay slip too. So for example, say he's done... Um, some more hours here so we could have done 10 hours and you may have done those 10 hours not at a standard rate but maybe a time and a half double time here so you can see here by clicking anywhere on the blue um, line you'll have various options here so it could be that he worked Sunday so the global item I set up a little while back is available for selection and I can select accordingly there if an employee is assigned to departments and he is hourly paid, okay, I can then assign the departments to each hourly pay. So it could be that he's done 20 hours in the marketing and 10 hours in the sales. Okay. Okay. My next employee then is um, an example of someone who's being paid a daily rate. And you'll see here that five days is flowing through for her. And that's simply because I've instructed Brightpay that she works a five-day week. So when assigning her typical working days, I have her tick to work Monday to Friday. If I change that, say she only worked Monday to Thursday, um, then this would um, update accordingly that it could be four days here. So there is that automatic link to the employee's calendar for daily paid employees. Okay. So simply work through each employee and when ready, if we return to the summary view, okay, when ready, simply click on finalize pay slips. You'll notice here that one employee isn't being paid anything, he has a zero pay slip, but it's still important to bring that employee forward um, as you're finalizing, otherwise he will remain in week one um, in this example. So when clicking on finalize pay slips, make sure to update him with the, with the rest of the employees as well. So at the finalized pay slip stage, by default, all employees will be ticked for finalizing. Now, should it happen that you're maybe waiting on timesheets or something is holding you up with particular employees, but you wish to process the other employees, what you can do is simply untick those employees that you don't wish to finalize and click on OK. So you'll see here then, down the left-hand side, that those employees with green ticks against their name have been finalized and have now moved into week two. And those that still have um, an open pay slip won't have any tick against their name. So should I then wish to finalize them at a later date? It may be that they have just a different pay date. For example, if I want to pay them on the 9th instead, I can click on OK and they are finalized too. 
So once you have finalized a pay period, if we just look to the menu bar here at the top, you'll see now that these items are in black for selection. So pay slips can now be printed, sorry, printed, emailed, or exported to PDF as required. So we'll just take a look at the print pay slips option here. Okay. So simply select the employees whose pay slip you wish to print, and then over at the top of this screen, select the payslip type that you wish to print to. So BrightPay does facilitate printing payslips to um, blank A4 paper, and if this option is selected, two payslips will print per A4 page for you. So there is no requirement for any BrightPay stationery um, or anything like that. Um, so if you were cost saving, for example, you can print straight onto plain paper. Should you wish to use Payslip Stationery, Stationery we do supply that, um, and if anybody wants a sample pack sending, please do let me know and we can arrange that for you. Um, we do two types of Payslip Stationery. One is two per page and it's simply perforated in the middle and they work in conjunction then with um, window envelopes. So each Payslip can be popped into a window envelope for the employee. The second type that BrightPay offers um, is then a one per page security payslip. So this is just one sheet. Um, it prints out the employee's payslip and it will then seal for you. The employee's address will come through for you. So if you were posting it, for example, um, that facilitates that option there. We also cater for the Sage um, 011 payslip and the Iris FY95 payslip. So we found that good few people that are migrating to BrightPay who have used Sage and Iris before they have um, Payslip stationery left over. So we've brought those options in so you can use up your, your stationery if moving to BrightPay. So I'll just, do, um, I'll just select the, the blank A4 paper option here. If you wish to customize the payslip, so um, you want to add extra information to it or remove information, then you can click on the options button here. And you can then instruct BrightPay, for example, you may just want to remove, um, no, for example, you may want to show the employer address on the payslip. So you can tick that option there. And you may just not want to show the payment method, for example. And if we just do a print preview now, those are your employees' payslips ready for printing here. Okay, and if happy, just press print at the top of the screen. Likewise, um, rather than printing, should you wish to email payslips to employees, you simply select the email payslips option here. So BrightPay will only give you a listing of employees for whom you have email addresses entered for. Um, should you wish to email to more people, you just need to ensure that their email address is entered in their employee record for you. Um, so simply select the employees you wish to email. Enter a reply to address in. I'll just use a colleague here just in a test environment. And you simply click on send emails. So those emails come to our own email server and they batch every every little while. Um, usually find that they go pretty much instantaneously. Um, and then once they hit our server and they leave our server, they're then deleted. So we're not holding any um, pay slips at all. So once they've left up, they, they, they've gone from our records here. Okay. Similarly, um, if you would like to export the pay slips to PDF, for example, so often it can be the case that maybe your client wishes to look at the pay slips first of all before they're distributed to employees, then the export pay slips option is often used for this. So again, simply select the employees that you wish to export, um, choose a location that you wish to export to, so that may be a folder somewhere on your PC, and you click the export option. And they'll be exported to the location that you chose. Okay. So to then um, access maybe um, kind of your, your pay records, um, you then have the pay employees option here on the menu bar. So you see here that for any employees paid by cash, um, you have a cash payment breakdown here. 
So I have three employees set on to be on a cash payment. And all these can be printed, um, so all these reports can be printed as required. Um, I can then access a check payment breakdown as well. So this indicates to me those employees being paid by check. And if I do have somebody on credit transfer here, um, obviously I have no bank account details entered for this employee. But if I did, they would come up here and I would simply click on the bank file option here. Okay, I don't have details in. But all you would do then is simply select your bank file option here, click on save, save your bank file to a location of your choice, and that's then ready for upload into your banking software. Okay, so very, very seamless, the bank file there. Okay. Once you have finalized a pay period, if you subsequently notice a mistake, then any pay period can be reopened. So for example, here, um, say I need to reopen Donna Roberts here. So I simply select her name. I click on reopen pay slips here and click on OK. And that will now allow me to edit her record. So maybe she only worked one day that week and I can finalize her payslip and make my change. So you'll see here that as I'm finalizing my slip payslips, I'm getting a number here against my RTI menu. And that simply means that um, BrightPay has automatically prepared your full payment submission for you and that is now ready for sending. So in my first week there, I had um, employees that were paid on two different dates, so hence I have two full payment submissions here, so one for the 9th and one for the 10th. So if you've no more changes to make, simply click on the Send Now option. Um, I am being asked for late reporting reasons simply because it's December now and I've just updated a week one <laughs> April pay slip, but obviously in real time you wouldn't get that um, request, and simply click on Send Now. Obviously, I'm just in a test environment here, so that's not going to go through to HMRC. So I'm just going to use a little cheat key here. So I'm going to um, let BrightPay know that I have sent it and it has been accepted by HMRC. And I'll just mark those two as sent. Okay, and my submissions have gone through. As just mentioned there, if you do need to make a change to payroll, um, if you have submitted your full payment submission and now need to make the change, it can be done. And again, you would be simply selecting the employee or employees whose pay slips you wish to reopen. So I'll reopen this gentleman's here. I make my change accordingly and I'll finalize his pay slip again. Sorry, I changed his pay date. <laughs> just bear with me, just reopen that one. So I originally paid them on the 9th to say that the date is still the same. So where you're reopening a payslip to make a change and your full payment submission has already gone through to HMRC, obviously there'll be no new full payment submission in your RTI section to report the change that you made. But what BrightPay does facilitate um, for amendments after the, the relevant full payment submission has been submitted is to do an additional FPS. So all you need to do is return to your RTI section, click on New, and choose the additional FPS option. And I can just select the employee or employees in question. And my reason for my additional FPS would be correction to earlier submission in this example. Click on OK. And that additional full payment submission will then report my um, amended year-to-date figures for that employee. So HMRC should pick those up as the, the new details for him. Okay, so it serves as an interim FPS really in effect there. Okay, and I'll just mark it as sent already. Okay, so as soon as your um, pay period is finalized, you'll see this little head and shoulders symbol um, moving forward. So where you see this head and shoulders symbol, it means that you've got open pay slips. So if I click into week two now, so one thing that BrightPay does is it always remembers what you've done in the pay period before. So you can see here that Jemima is coming through with 500. So it's, it's remembering from the, the, the previous pay period for you. 
So extra functionality just to show you now what you can do on the employee's pay slips. Um, so if I just click on the more option here, first of all, you can zeroize pay slips. You may be um, in a situation where, you know, especially for hourly paid people, for example, you may think, no, I don't want the amounts to come through each pay, you know, each pay period from the period before. I want to have a fresh start. So this zeroize pay slips option will give you that option to, um, to zeroize. So for example, should I wish to zeroize all my hourly paid employees? I can select to zeroize my hourly pays, click on OK, and you'll see here now, for example, my Ronan Burton, it's cleared his hours down, it's zeroized all his hours. OK. What BrightPay also facilitates as well is that if you have pay information in CSV file formats, for example, you may be using time recording um, software, for example, and your pay records are in CSV file format, this will give you the option to import um, pay records in, in, in CSV. So for example, now say I want to import hourly payments. I select this option. I browse to where my hourly payment CSV file is. And similar to the import of employee information, you just need to work through here um, and just tell BrightPay what each column represents. So again, I've just done this just to speed things up for you. And if I click on import, you can see here that Ronan Burton was in my CSV file, so it's updated his hours accordingly. And also Christopher Quinn here, it's brought his hours in as well. Okay. There is also the facility here under more as well. Um, should you wish to add additions, deductions, notes, or FPS settings to multiple pay slips, you can select this option here. Um, sorry, I'll just do note. For example, you can select the employees for whom you wish to apply the setting to. OK, and click on OK. And that will just speed things up for you there. You can see the notes there. So rather than have to do it on an individual basis, there are these batch processing options there for you too. OK. So again, I'll just, I'll just finalise this pay period and bring us forward. And again, your RTI full payment submission will be created. And again, simply click Send Now to report week two to HMRC. Okay. So BrightPay can also cater for attachment orders and also statutory payments. So I'll show you now how you would go about applying an, an attachment order first of all. So, for example, here um, on this employee's payslip, so should you be in receipt of an attachment order, then these are facilitated under the additions and deductions section here. So simply click on add and you'll find the link for the attachment orders. Okay, this brings you through then to our attachment orders screen. And if I click on add attachment order here, you'll see we cater for a good number of different attachment orders. Um, so it would simply be a case of selecting the most applicable one. If there's one in the, um, there isn't one in the listing there for you, you do have other attachment order, which allows you to set up the attachment order you require. So in this example, say for example, we have somebody with a council tax attachment of earnings order, simply click this option here, fill in the relevant details, okay, just pop some dummy information in here for you, select the date that the order has been made and the date to apply from, okay, if you have the date to stop, enter that as well. And then on the following screen, then, you can then indicate whether it's to be a priority attachment order or not, um, whether you wish it to always be calculated using full qualifying earnings, and should you wish to deduct the £1 admin charge for administering the attachment order, you can indicate to do so here. So say the amount to be paid is £500, and I'm going to click on Save. And you'll see then in the relevant pay period, the attachment order will flow through to the employee's pay slip for you. So again, quite seamless with the setup there. Okay. So 
just to then cover um, as you're progressing with your payroll, if you have any mid-year starters, um, again, you'll just be returning to the employees menu and clicking on new employee. So anybody um, joining mid-tax year, simply fill in their relevant details. Again, I'll just use a little shortcut button there. Um, so with any um, mid-year starters, the starter leave section of the, the employee record will come into play for you here. So simply enter the employee start date. Yeah. And once you've entered a start date in the current tax year, you'll then be asked for further information. So whether they're working still for an overseas employer and then their starter declaration. So is it statement A, statement B or statement C? So for example, if it's statement B, you'll then be asked for their taxable pay and tax paid in previous employment. Just got some dummy information in here and click on save. So what MyPay then does with that employee is that it will take the employee start date and it will assign it into the, assign the employee into the correct pay period for you. So you can see here this is week ending the 23rd of April. My employee start date was the 21st, so she's been added into week three for me. And I can process now her payslip going forward. Likewise, for anybody who's leaving the employment mid-tax year, again, it's very, very seamless in bright pay. So with the onset of RTI, it's now important, especially with from what you have to do in bright pay, is that you must enter the employee's leave date before you finalise the um, employee's final pay period. It used to always be the case that you could finalise the pay period and then do the P45, put the leave date in afterwards. But so that you can report the employee's leave date in your final FPS for them, the leave date must go in at the time of finalising their pay slips. So for example here, say my Ben Taylor is leaving the company. So if I go to finalise pay slips, I can see here that against Ben Taylor's name, there is a little spanner symbol. So if I click on that, I can enter his leave date here. So say he's leaving on the 20th of April. I click on save and I now get the yes indicator in his lever column and likewise for my new starter her starter information will be included in the next FPS that I do so if I just click on OK here I'll now show you that FPS so you see here Ben Taylor is here and his leave date is flowing through to the full payment submission so HMRC will receive that information if I can just find my new starter, you can see here that her starter information is flowing through to that FPS for you. Okay. For any mid-year lever then, if I just access Ben Taylor's employee record, um, as soon as his leave date has been captured by the software in the correct pay period, I can then access his P45 here. So I can then print this for the employee in question. I'm given two options. I can print straight onto blank A4 paper um, from within BrightPay, or if you have pre-printed HMRC stationery, you can do so here. So if I just do a print preview for you, this is printing onto blank A4 paper. Yeah, and that can be printed off to give to the employee. Okay. So just returning to payroll, and I just want to show you how BrightPay handles some of the statutory payments. So we do cater for all statutory payments in the software, including the new shared parental pay. Um, and all statutory payments, they're all um, linked to the employee's calendar, and I'll just show you how that works now. So if I take an employee here, I'll take Tanya Peters. So We'll assume in this example that Tanya has gone out sick and we want to actually process some statutory sick pay for her. Anybody who's on any kind of parental leave and there's to be a statutory payment applied, under their statutory pay option on their pay slip, simply click the calendar button here. And this takes you through to the employee's calendar. So for example, say she has gone out sick from the 24th 
to the 30th of April here. And she's going out on sick. I simply, simply click the sick leave button on the right hand side. Okay. We'll see now that BrightPay highlights that in red on the calendar and red indicates sick leave. And if I select any of those sick leave days, you can see over on the right hand side now, the BrightPay has automatically calculated how many qualifying days she has, how many of those are waiting days, and how many statutory sick pay days she is entitled to. Returning to her pay slip then, I can see the statutory sick pay has been picked up by BrightPay. Because I'm very early on in the tax year and statutory sick pay has to look back eight weeks, I don't have eight weeks of payroll data in at the moment. But if I do know she has um, enough in, in terms of the average weekly earnings, I can actually click the spanner symbol just to override that. And you'll see here now that she's been paid for two days of sick leave um, during that week. And likewise, if you just wanted to adjust the pay accordingly, you can do so there. Okay. Looking then at maybe a female employee who may be going on um, a statutory maternity leave. Um, so we'll take um, our top employee here. Okay, let me just remove that addition there. Okay. So for an employee, for example, going on maternity leave, again, to apply any statutory payment, simply click on a calendar option. And what you do here is you select the start of leave date for the employee on the calendar. So say she's going off on the 24th of April. I select that date and I simply click on the parenting leave option over at the top right. And I have a few options to choose from. So in this instance, we'll assume it's maternity leave. And this will bring you through to a maternity leave screen. So you simply just have to work through this and enter the, the required date. So we'll ask for expected birthday. So we'll say it's the 8th of April. Okay. And fill in accordingly. And when ready, click on save. And you'll see then that the employee's calendar will be highlighted with the 39 weeks that I selected. So green means that she is on maternity leave. So she'll be due back in January 2016. If I close out of the, the calendar, again, you'll see now the statutory maternity pay flowing through to the employee's pay slip. And again, just because I don't have enough historical data in my break pay example at the moment, I can actually tick to override that and I can enter her average weekly earnings and you'll see her statutory maternity pay kicking in. You won't always have to do that with the spanner. The, the more you get into bright pay, as long as it can see the, the, the relevant earnings period, then that um, calculation will be automatic for you. Okay. And just one more example, just to show you how the new shared parental pay works. So, for example, say Ronan Burton here is going um, to share um, parental pay with his partner. So, again, I'm going to click on calendar and I'll just choose a date here that he's going out. Um, so, I'll say it's the 29th. I click on parenting leave and I'm going to choose the shared parental leave option here. Okay, and again, you just need to fill in the relevant dates. Having to jump back a little bit here. <laughs> 19th there. And then you complete the blocks of leave. So you can fill in here that um, the date he wants to take his leave. So say his first block is to start on the 29th of April. Um, and you can add further blocks. Maybe he wants to take maybe another three weeks at a later date. You then also just need to fill in the employee's partner's information. So I'll just quickly type in some dummy information here and save. And you'll see the shared parental leave being applied to his calendar. Okay. So if I return to the payroll screen now and um, um, this particular employee's pay slip, you'll see that no shared parental pay has flowed through. 
And that really is, I guess, a good place to explain why um, statutory payments can be calculated in two ways. Um, some softwares use the pro rata method. So if it's a part week, then the number of days will be pro rata accordingly. And we are aware, I think, the likes of Sage possibly work in that manner. BrightPay, however, um, operates on the full statutory week method when calculating um, statutory payments. And that means that BrightPay has to see a full week pass um, before the statutory payment will kick in. So this employee's um, leave was starting on the 29th of April. So in this week ending the 30th of April, because it cannot see seven days happening yet, then you'll see nothing appear for the shared parental leave. And instead, it will kick in the week after when it sees a full seven days occurring. So both methods are acceptable by HMRC. So it's just something just to bear in mind if you are switching to BrightPay that there can be some different methodology being applied between the softwares. Okay. So, so if we now just look here, um, I just want to take you now just through to the HMRC payment section of the software. So basically, as you are updating your pay periods, BrightPay is keeping a track of what you owe in terms of PYE and NIC to HMRC. And that information can be accessed under the HMRC payments menu. When you first access this utility, you'll just be asked how you remit to HMRC. So do you remit on a monthly basis or quarterly basis? So we'll just choose monthly here. Just press continue. And you can see here I have four pay periods updated. So this will be my total of my four pay periods to date. Okay. So you see here you have your tax liability. Um, if you have any CIS deductions suffered, these can be entered here too, for example. And then you have your NIC rate down here. If you wish to claim your employment allowance and you haven't already done so, then it's very, very simple. You simply click on Enable here and you prepare an EPS. Okay, and what you do, that EPS indicates that you want to tell HMRC that you want to claim your, your £2,000 employment allowance and you literally send now to HMRC. If I return to HMRC payments then, I then click on enable again. I'm simply asked, are you operating multiple POAE schemes? If not, I say no. And that means BrightPay will um, allocate £2,000 that it can take from your employer NIC. And you'll see here in this particular tax month, tax month one, that there was £898.28 in employer NIC. So your amount due at the bottom will take this into account. That has been deducted to arrive at that figure. Okay. You'll see here that we have statutory payments going through. So as soon as I enter a payment date at the bottom of this screen and save changes, BrightPay will now inform you that you do have to submit an, an, an employer payment summary um, as well as all your full payment submissions, which should have already gone through at this stage. So it will prompt that you now need an employer payment summary just to inform HMRC that you need these amounts deducting from your total liability that has gone through on your full payment submissions. So at the prompt, simply say yes. That will create your employer payment summary. And again, you'll see the amounts over here, including CIS deductions suffered, and you simply click on send now. Okay, so just finally, just to complete the payroll functionality with you, and then we'll have a little wee break. Um, the analysis function of the software can be accessed at any time. And you'll find here that, um, first of all, there are an, a number of preset reports that we've already um, done for you. So we call them the favorite reports, probably the most commonly used reports um, in terms of payroll. So for example, here, if you want to do a payroll summary, you can click this option, literally select your criteria. So if you wanted to say do weeks one to four and you wanted to re, um, report on, on both employees and departments, select your employees from the listing. Um, if you're happy with the selection, simply run report. Okay, and your report will display be displayed on screen. 
A number of reports can be run at the same time. You have complete flexibility over the uh, over this um, utility. So, for example, if you wanted a statutory pay report as well, I can run report and I can have a number of reports open all together. All reports can then be edited. So, if you wish to change the criteria, um, and they can also be saved and printed and exported as well. So you can export to Excel, CSV file, clipboard, or to PDF document. Should none of the favorite reports suit you, um, then you do have the option here to generate your own reports. And you simply click on new report. And again, just choose the criteria that you wish to include. So for example, I might just want a report on employee NIC numbers, for example. Okay. Um, and I want it for all employees. So I can click under columns and I can say or well, select, deselect all the information that was coming up as default. And I'm going to do name, surname and national insurance number. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll see here that an awful lot of information can be brought into reports of your choice. So you've got period amounts, year to date amounts and employer items there. So I think we've pretty much covered everything we can. Um, and once you've selected your criteria, simply click on OK and run report. And there's your report on screen based on your selection. Should it be a report that you wish to use again and you wish to save it, then you simply click on the save option here, enter a report name, and if you want to make it a favorite, you can do simply tick the favorite button, save, and it will be added to your favorite reports menu bar there. Okay. All reports can then subsequently be managed by clicking on manage report. It could be that I don't ever use, say, the hourly pay one, and I can delete it, and I can obviously then tidy up my report listing accordingly here. Okay. So that completes the overview of the payroll functionality. I think, Karen, should we take a... Yeah, guys, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of information to take in there. So just a quick five-minute break, and we'll be back. So we'll speak. Okay, hi, guys. We're back again for more homework. So just before we continue, we just had one question there. Um, so it's from Jasmine. So the question is, can you go back to the E or NI relief if you don't know it at that time? So Jasmine asked that question when we were looking at setting up the employer details. Yes, you can, Jasmine. I mean, at the time of setting up your employer details, if there is something that you, you don't know, then just continue on and at any time you come in, can, can come into this employer um, utility and tick or untick as, as required just to indicate whether small employers relief applies. I think just mandatory requirements at the time of setting up an employer is obviously the company name, PLE, reference and address. Um, anything else it will let you then set up later, you know, at, at, when you have the information. Okay, hopefully that answered your question there, Jasmine. Um, so just then moving on to part two of the webinar, so just to tie things up. Um, as you're probably aware, BrightPay also contains automatic enrollment functionality as well. So as well as payroll, there's the AE function too. So it's a very hot topic at the moment. So I'll just go through um, basically the process with you and how BrightPay handles AE. Okay, I'm just going to, sorry, just close this company here. And I'll just open up this one. This is ready to go. Okay, so the starting point for you with regard to automatic enrollment is um, to first ascertain your staging date. And once you have your staging date, this can be entered in BrightPay and you will enter it in the pensions utility here and by clicking the automatic enrollment for, um, button here. Okay, so you'll see that we have a dedicated um, space for your staging date. So simply enter the date required here. And when you save this, um, this screen, that means then that BrightPay will know when to kick in with your automatic enrollment um, 
flags and alerts for you so we're kicking at the correct time for you. Once you are set up with a pension scheme, as soon as you have your pension scheme details, again, these can be set up in BrightPay ahead of your staging date. So it's good to kind of get ahead of yourself if you can, do some of the groundwork. And to set up your pension scheme, simply click on the Add New Scheme option within the Pensions Utility. So you'll see on screen there that we currently offer support for 14 um, pension providers here. So if you are with one of those or your, your client is, has gone with one of those, simply select them from the listing. Alternatively, if you're with a pension scheme that we don't cover um, directly here, you can use the other automatic enrollment option um, to set up the details of the pension scheme you are with. So in this example today, we'll just assume that we are with Nest. Um, so I'm going to choose Nest here from the listing. And all you need to do is simply enter your employer reference. And Nest, if you're with Nest, will provide that reference to you. And then on the following screen, you then um, set up your groups accordingly. So your groups need to match exactly how you have set them up with your pension provider. So you may be setting up groups, or they're sometimes known as categories um, with other pension providers. Um, your groups will be, for example, say you may have weekly paid employees, and you may also have employees on a different pay frequency, say monthly. So some pension providers require you to break those down accordingly. So for example, I may have a weekly group and also a monthly group. It may also be that you have employees who are on the same pay frequency, but they have different contribution rates that are going to be applied to their pay. For example, employees may have one set of contribution rates, as you can see on the screen here, um, and perhaps managers, directors may have um, different contribution rates. So again, you may be splitting those um, employees up accordingly into different groups. So when setting up your groups, you will see you have the ability to select the contribution rates that are applicable to the group you are just setting up here. So for example, if you're using the phased minimum contributions, which is 1% for the employer and 1% for the employee, you can choose that from the listing. And you'll also then be given the option to set the earnings basis. So whether you want the standard qualifying earnings to apply or whether you wish to customize these. So for example, if you wanted to remove limits completely. Okay. Once complete, simply save your pension scheme details. So at the top of the pension utility screen here, you will see that there is an assessment tool. And what BrightPay can do is both a pre-staging assessment of the employees in the payroll and also a post-staging assessment uh, report as well. So for pre-staging, there are two options to do a preview to include opt-ins or without opt-ins. So I'll just generate one here now for you. So the pre-assessment preview um, will basically um, give you an overview of, of what automatic enrollment will look like once an employer stages. So that is, it will indicate what worker category each employee is likely to fall into based on the earnings um, entered in the current pay period in which you've generated this report, and also what their estimated um, qualifying earnings and contributions will be. This document as well also um, includes some general information on employee assessment. And so for payroll bureaus, this could be a handy um, document just to, to print or email to clients, for example, a few months ahead of stage and just to give them an idea of, of what is likely to happen. So as soon as you reach your staging date in the payroll, so I'm using the 1st of January 2016 in our example here. So in my week 40 payroll, I am hitting my staging date. And you'll see now that BrightPay will kick in with these on-screen flags. And if I select an employee record, um, a pay slip, you'll see these yellow alerts as well. So as soon as you reach your staging date, BrightPay kicks in and it will automatically assess your employees for you. So it will determine whether they are eligible job holders, non-eligible job holders, and entitled workers. 
So you see here that my first employee is being assessed as an eligible job holder. And if I click on view options here, so you'll see here that I have the option to enroll this employee, to postpone her or to log as exempt if applicable. So in this instance, we will enroll the employee. So simply click on the enroll button and you select your scheme from the listing if you have it already set up. So I'm going to choose weekly here and also the applicable tax relief. So this is relief at source for nest. I then press continue. So that employee is now enrolled into that nest pension scheme for me. Brightpay will then automatically prepare the employee's enrollment letters, which you are obliged to, to give to the employee once enrolled. And if I click on letter here, you'll see that these um, enrollment letters can be printed, they can be exported to PDF, or they can be emailed directly to an employee straight from the Brightpay software. So if I just do a print preview here, so here we have this employee's enrollment letter, and this is going to include information about her staging date and what her contribution rates are, um, her option to opt out should she choose to do so, and also then just some general information about what automatic enrollment will mean for the employee. So once the employee is in receipt of their enrollment letter, you can then tell Brightpay that this has been done. So simply click Mark as done for this employee. And if I return to my payroll screen now, you can see that her on-screen flag and alert have disappeared because I've dealt with her automatic enrollment <coughs> duty there. My next employee in the listing is being assessed as a non-eligible job holder this time. So again, if I click on view options, I'm given four options for this worker category. So first of all, I have to write to the employee, um, inviting them to, to, sorry, to instruct them that they have the right to opt in should they choose to do so. If they return to the employer and say, yes, I would like to opt in, then you have the opt in button here. And also then, again, the postpone and exempt button here, should they apply. My next employee then is being assessed as an entitled worker. So I am now given the following options for the entitled worker work category. So first of all, I have an obligation to write to the employee, inviting them that they can join, should they choose to do so. Um, should they then decide to join, I have the option here, and again, to postpone or mark as exempt. So should you wish to postpone an employee for whatever reason, um, simply click the postpone option within their um, automatic enrollment utility and enter their deferral date. So they have, you have up to three months, uh, the deferral date can be uh, three months from your staging date maximum. So say we are to defer till the 1st of April and I press continue. So that employee has now been postponed. Brightpay, similar to the enrollment letters, will also produce your postponement letters for you. So again, by clicking on the letter option, I have my three options again to print, export, or email. And once done, and the employee is in receipt of their postponement letter, I can mark as done accordingly. So a useful feature in Brightpay is the um, ability to batch process employees all at the same time. So, so rather than you having to go through each individual um, and um, either enroll or you know whatever your obligation would be. So at the time of enrolling, for example, an eligible job holder, you'll see here, if I just select the scheme, that I have the option to enroll multiple employees with the same settings selected up above. So this will speed things up, especially in a bureau environment. So I can select all the employees that I wish to enroll all at the same time, click on the Enroll Select Employees option, and all those employees have been enrolled with the click of a couple of buttons. Likewise, enrollment letters can be batched processed. So again, they can be printed in batch, um, Export, exported to PDF in batch and emailed in a batch as well. And again, once done, you can mark as done for multiple employees. So again, just to speed things up for you. Okay. 
similar to um, batch um, enrolling, you can also batch postpone. So if you are to, if you're looking to postpone all employees or a number of employees, that can be done again all at the one time. So again, the time of going to postpone one employee, enter the deferral date, and select the option to postpone assessment until the entered date for multiple employees. And again, select the employees in question and postpone them. And again, their postponement letters can be batch processed by selecting the create send letter for multiple employees. And again, once completed, you can mark as done. Okay, so I return to my payroll now. You can see that all my flags and alerts have disappeared. So that now means that I've dealt with all my automatic enrollment duties at staging. So if I now look at an employee who I did enroll, um, my Jemima Appleby here, so you'll see now that because she's been enrolled, um, her pension deductions are now flowing through on her payslip. And if I then go to finalize the payslips, and I go to do a print preview of one, you'll see that the employee's payslips will also reference the pension deductions going forward. Okay. So where we offer dedicated support for a pension scheme, so we have the 14 here at the moment, um, that means that BrightPay can also produce um, if required an enrollment file, some pension providers require an enrollment file initially and also then the subsequent contributions file which are then to be submitted to the, your pension provider in question. Um, where we don't offer support, these would then have to be, you know, um, you can log on to your pension provider's portal and manually put the amounts in there. But where we have the dedicated support, we can do those files for you. So again, just using Nest in our example here. So if I select Nest here on my menu bar and just click back into registration details. So what Nest have developed and what we've been able to bring into the software is um, something called um, API, which is Application Program Interface. And basically in simple terms, that means that your enrollment file and contributions file for Nest, if you are a Nest user, um, it means that you can submit your enrollment and contributions file similar to how you would do an RTI return. So it can go directly from BrightPay into Nest. So the, it kind of avoids you having to save your files to a location of your choice and then log in separately to the pension provider. So you'll see here that we have um, two submission methods, CSV file being the, um, the manual upload, or you can choose to use the Nest web service if you are signed up with Nest. So what you do if we're going to use the new API option is enter your user ID and password and these are what you use to log into Nest and save the changes. And does Nest require an enrollment file first of all? Um, simply click on enrollment summary and click on send enrollment summary over to on the right hand side. So let me just work through the following steps. So step one is where you select the employees that you wish to include in the enrollment file and click on next. At step two, um, for Nest, you're just required to enter your payment source. And again, this just has to match exactly what you have set up with Nest. It probably would make sense to you. You know, you, you'll recognize what the system's asking you for because you will have done this with Nest. And at step three, <laughs> you'll see here, now it may look completely gobbledygook to you, um, but this is your file for submission to Nest. So this is your enrollment file ready to go. And all you do is click on send now. And similar to RTI and your submissions to HMRC, that will go directly to Nest. And you will then get confirmation back. I just can't do it, obviously, because we're in a test environment. But you'll get confirmation back, sometimes they say just within 10 minutes, um, up at the top to say that it has been accepted by Nest. This message here will be updated accordingly. Likewise, um, once you've submitted your enrollment file, um, pension providers also need a contributions file every pay period just to report the contributions being deducted from the employees. And again, for Nest, this can be done using the API option. So simply click Contribution Summary on the menu bar, click on Send Submission, just complete your information accordingly. So I just need to fill in the payment due date. 
Step two, select the employees that you're including in the contributions file. It's step three, if any employees haven't made full contribution, um, sorry, full contributions or, you know, there's none at all, you just have to indicate the reason why, for example, they may have chosen to stop contributions or have opted out and click on next. And again, at step four, here's your file, your contributions file ready for submission into there. So again, with the click of send now, that will go and you'll get your confirmation back here at the top of the screen. Okay. So as you continue to process your payroll after staging, um, contributions will continue to be um, calculated and deducted accordingly. Brightpay can also handle then any opt-out requests. So once an employee has been enrolled and they subsequently choose to opt out of the pension scheme, you may then receive an opt-out request from the pension provider. And should you receive a request, um, all you need to do is go to the employee's um, utility, select the employee in question and access their automatic en enrollment um, function here. Once an employee has been enrolled, you then get an opt-out option for them. So simply click on opt-out, enter their opt-out date. The reference that you have been given, this has to be a valid opt-out reference. Click continue. And if I return to the payroll and my next open pay period, you'll see then that because the employee was in their opt-out period, they are entitled to a refund of their pension contributions that they've already made since staging. And you'll see here that the employer will get a refund too. Okay. Just for your own automatic enrollment, um, um, your reporting requirements, again, we looked at it briefly just before the break, um, but under the analysis function, should you wish to generate some um, automatic enrollment reports, you can do so by clicking on new report. And again, if I just do add and remove columns, so you'll see here, for example, you could choose to run a report on worker category, enrollment date, opt-in date, etc. Or if you wish to run a report on contributions, you can do so here accordingly. And you have your report. And again, Similar to your payroll reports, you can save that if it's going to be a report that you use all the time and you can add it to your favourites bar as well. Okay, so just to finish off then with the automatic enrolment um, functionality, um, once you've staged, you have five months from your staging date to complete your declaration of compliance. This cannot be done within Brightpay, it has to be done on the pensions regulator website. However, once you have completed it, you can just make a record in Brightpay of the date that you have done that on. For example, here and save that. Okay. Also as well, if you are um, signed up with a pension provider who are taking care of the communication side of things for you, so are going to send out your, your enrollment letters and postponement letters, for example, you won't need Brightpay to continue reminding you of these, that you have them outstanding. So there is a facility here to turn these communication reminders off if you need to do so. Okay. From staging, then, as you continue to progress through your payroll, um, Brightpay is continually assessing your employees for you. And should, for example, just as an example, an employee turns 22 and they have qualifying earnings, this will be flagged up to you in Brightpay. So you'll then suddenly find in a pay period an auto flag appearing just to indicate that you have automatic en um, enrollment duties to perform for them. And likewise, for any new starters that you subsequently add in, they will be assessed by Brightpay for you. So I think that just completes everything there, Karen. Um, Great. Thanks yeah. for coming in, Vicky. I certainly learned a lot there. <laughs> a lot's um, taken. Yeah, it's quite, <coughs> quite exciting, the new uh, web services tool by Nest or API, as it's officially known, but I suppose it's, it's just a direct integration that allows payroll to speak to the pension provider and, and Nest are the first ones really to, to release to it. So we're, yeah. we're very excited about that. 
Um, so if you do have any questions, you can type them into the, the question bar. There's just a couple of questions that I have here, um, and we won't keep you too much longer. <clears throat> um, so one question here is, how much is the auto-enrollment features in BrightPay? Um, oh, well, yeah, as well as that, um, it's, it's completely free of charge. I suppose what's different about BrightPay is um, we believe that the auto-enrollment features and functionality is very much part of the payroll so it's it's free so your your bureau package is 199 plus that per tax year per tax year and that includes unlimited employers unlimited employees auto enrollment functionality and free support so um it's, it's quite a good deal um so another question is here is um how long has bright pay been around um, I suppose again I can ask answer that one. I suppose Brightpay the product has been around for the last four years but our company has been operating in Ireland and the UK in the payroll industry for 20, 20 years, years. Yeah. yeah over 20 mm -hmm. years um, so, so that you know we have been around for, for a long time you know we're not just uh, newcomers on the block and um, we have a number of payroll products and a number of like employee handbooks and I'm very much involved in the payroll industry. Um, so another question here, um, is there a discount for tax assist members? So yes, um, for those of you who don't know, we're a preferred supplier um, a preferred payroll supplier to tax assist members so that just happened early this year and as part of that preferred supplier agreement we have um, a 25% discount for the first year subscription. Now at the moment as we're halfway through the tax year we actually have a 50% off offer and, and that's on at the moment for the 15, 16 version. <coughs> for, the, for the next tax year, um, the 25% will be applicable for new customers for your first year subscription. Um, also, just have another comment from Jasmine, just uh, thanking us for that, that point that you answered earlier on. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, one, one last question, which is a very tricky question. Um, how much would you charge your clients for auto enrollment services? Um, I suppose that's very much a hot topic on at the moment. Um, particularly, you know, a lot, a lot of payroll bureaus, accountants, and bookkeepers. You know, the the, the price that, that accountants are charging is is varying uh, greatly across across the industry. We are hosting a webinar on it next year. I'll just bring up um, the link here as well for you. I'll just go back to our PowerPoint. We'll send this on to everybody. So we have a link there for, for book, a, book a demo with some auto enrollment guides. And there is a guide there on how to price um, or charge your clients for auto enrollment. And then we have a number of free webinars next year and a number of paid webinars as well. So if you click on, on this link here, um, which we'll send later on, um, you'll, you'll see all of our webinars that we'll be running next year. Um, and then there's no more questions that are coming through. So here's just a few uh, nice statistics uh, that we have uh, for BrightPay. Um, and as you know, as I already mentioned, we're a preferred supplier for tax assist. We've also been accredited by the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers. So again, that's just um, in terms of our credibility. So I'd like to thank everybody today for attending. And thanks a million, uh, Vicky, for the, that very in-depth no demonstration. If you do have any questions, we will be sending on follow-up emails to everybody with them. Um, with an email address. So if you, if you have any questions, you can pop onto the website there or, or phone our support line and we'd be delighted to help you. Okay, well enjoy the rest of your evening everybody. And thanks. Thanks everybody. Bye bye.